Like any average American kid, I played some Little League growing up. Here's my team uh, circa 2002. There I am with my grandpa glasses and my eyes closed like an idiot. What a, what a motley crew we were. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat, we lost every single game we were in. The score would be totally one-sided. We're not even paying attention anymore. We're fucking trading Pokemon cards on the bench. Our coach is like, all right, guys, it's neck and neck. Let's pull together. The other team's got kids playing Game Boys in the outfield. Their pitchers lobbing us volleyballs. We still can't fucking hit anything because we were just bad. We didn't know what we were doing. We, uh, we look like the team that the Harlem Globetrotters would play against. Just running into each other like a bunch of assholes all day. Our first batter of the year flung a goddamn bat into the stands. Hit somebody's little brother eating a hot dog. Oh, go, what a good start. We're going to be all-stars. Our coach is like, God damn it, if you're going to do that, do it to the other team's fans, you dummy. But we had some classy individuals on our team, okay? We had, uh, we had Josh, whose best feature was that he had a swimming pool at his house, which we took full advantage of. Hey, you guys want to come inside now? Yeah, we'll be there in a minute, John. My, uh, my name's Josh. Yeah, okay, whatever, Jim. And then there was little Billy, our catcher, who was uh, half the size of everybody else on the team, who couldn't throw the goddamn ball if his life depended on it. He could hardly throw it to the pitcher, let alone uh, try to throw anybody stealing a base. Throw it, Billy! He's stealing second! One time we were warming up before a game, and I threw the ball to him, and he's over there not fucking paying attention, just daydreaming, probably uh, probably thinking of the ass whooping we're gonna get, and the ball just nailed him right in the chest. I thought I killed him. I ran over there, I was like, holy shit, he's dead! We're dragging him off the field, the team's looking at us like we're some kind of circus act, and then there was Danny, our pitcher, whose dad would come to every game totally plastered, just totally drunk off his ass. He'd be yelling obscenities at the other team. Hey, blue team! You can go fuck yourselves! I mean red team! Or the blue team, I don't know which team's ours. But we appreciated it. It was the closest thing we had to a mascot, so it worked. And we actually came close to winning a game during the season. There was another team that uh, hadn't got a win yet. And these guys, they, uh, they looked worse than us. There was like a cross-eyed kid, some dude in a wheelchair. Like, alright, yeah, I think we got a chance. I think we can beat these guys. <laughs> And we're in the last inning, and we're uh, we're down by three with two outs, and Chubby Josh is up to bat. Our coach is like, all right, Josh, don't be an asshole. Go up there and get a base hit. So he goes up there, and he just crushes the ball. It's way out there. It's like 47 feet. We're flipping out on the bench, and he's running. He's running his ass off. He's running like there's a goddamn little Debbie snack on home plate waiting for him. He's rounding the bases and we're all like, stay at third, stay at third. Cause we knew his ass wasn't gonna get a home run. And he's like, ah, to hell with that. You don't get on Wheaties boxes by staying at third. I'm going for it. And he was out by a good mile. He wasn't even close, but he still managed to slide into home. And as he did it, his ass scraped against home plate in a very violent way. You knew it hurt and you knew some part of his ass was bleeding. And I'll never forget the look on his face. He just clutched his butt, waddled off the field crying. And our coach is like, way to go, Josh. We're owing 12 now, thanks to you. Maybe your asshole wouldn't be inside out if you would have just stayed at third like we told you to. And everybody hated Josh for the rest of his life. The end.